Okay, 2023 was one of the wildest years in politics that I can remember. So as we close out the year, my fellow MSNBC anchors and I are taking a look back at the top political moments of 2023. I'm going to start. It's pretty easy to be cynical in the world of politics today. So the best moment for me was when Tennessee State Representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson spoke so passionately on the floor in the wake of the Nashville shooting back in March. Instead of stopping the NRA's legislation that we know is killing people, we are seeing the proliferation of gun It gave me some hope about the next generation of politicians, and it really showed me that they're going to keep fighting, and they're going to do it with a moral clarity that we need so much more of in this world. Top political moment of 2023, it's hard. It's a crowded and competitive field, and, and there's a few candidates that I think are really right next to each other. So one is uh, the first time Donald Trump got indicted in 2023. Then another, which is also close, is the second time Donald Trump got indicted in 2023. Also, strong contender the third time Donald Trump got indicted in 2023. And likewise, a, nut, a dark horse, but also there, the fourth time Donald Trump got indicted in 2023. Um, I think it's a, they're tied for first in this uh, very, very eventful year. I could not nail it down to one. I got two political stories for you for 2023. The first was the arraignment of former President Donald Trump by DA Alvin Bragg here in Manhattan. I was outside the courthouse and it was history in the making. The second was his federal arraignment on charges for interfering in the 2020 election. I was outside that federal courthouse and I looked across the way at the Capitol, the steps that I stood on on January 6th when protesters stormed the Capitol. It was a full circle moment for the former president, for this country that watched on January 6th, and for me as a journalist. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. As we round the corner into 2024, I'm reminded of the 15 votes over four days that it took in January this year to elect a Speaker of the House. He failed once, he failed twice, he failed three times. It wasn't lucky number seven for Kevin McCarthy, or eight, or nine. After four days and 15 rounds of voting, Republican Kevin McCarthy of California has been elected the next Speaker of the House. It exposed the disparate factions in the House within one party, hijacked by its extreme members, and he only held that job for 10 months before members of his own party tossed him out in a motion to vacate. It is a political moment that really lasted most of the year and reflected one party's peak futility, dragging the public through not one, but two sadly comical, drawn out searches for House Speaker. The Honorable Mike Johnson of the state of Louisiana, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress. So I'm an optimist. I hope 2024 will see the House accomplish more on behalf of this country, but you know, come back to me next year because I may be forced to become a realist. My top political moment of the year is about the issue of abortion, and it is in November when the state of Ohio became the seventh state to use its constitution to affirm a woman's right to choose. Hot off the presses, our decision desk has just made a call in Ohio on issue one, and we project that it will pass. It's a bellwether for the issue that Democrats are counting on to be the biggest leverage for Joe Biden to get reelected. And it's also critical just for women's rights, period. We're seeing women and some men in these states, including red states like Ohio, affirmatively say, that we demand that women actually have control over their own bodies. My political moment of 2023 is an economic one. Economists were predicting we would be deep in recession at this point this year. But look at the numbers. We are not. Inflation is slowing. Employers are hiring. And wages continue to grow. That is all good and very surprising economic news. However, it's tricky political news. Pollsters tell us that voters don't feel good. Life's expensive. Rent, insurance, groceries, your bill when you go to a restaurant. So this political moment is a tricky one in 2023 because we've got all this good economic data, all these good numbers, but we don't have the American people feeling good about it. That's going to be a political challenge in 2024. There were many top moments of 2023, but the one I found most significant happened on April 7th. 
That's when Vice President Kamala Harris made a surprise visit to Nashville, Tennessee, to stand in solidarity with the Tennessee Three. The vice president went to the Tennessee Capitol to defend them, to rebuke a stunning attack on free speech, and to stand up for democracy. A democracy says you don't silence the people. You do not stifle the people. You don't turn off their microphones when they are speaking about the That's just a snippet of perhaps the best speech of Vice President Harris's time in office. My top political moment of the year was in August when tens of thousands of people marched on Washington, the date of the 1963 March on Washington. Blacks, Jews, Muslims, Arabs, LGBTQ, Latinos all marching together. And at the time we were marching, a hate crime against three blacks, a white supremacist by his own description, shot and killed three blacks in Jacksonville, Florida, at a Dollar General store. I picked this moment because it showed we can come together, but it also showed we must stay together to stop hate against anybody in this country. Donald Trump and his criminal cases have now teed up a critical legal issue to be decided by the Supreme Court of the United States. And that is whether or not a president can have criminal exposure and liability after he leaves the Oval Office for criminal conduct that is committed. And that's an important answer that needs to be obtained from SCOTUS because presidential immunity is not only going to impact how we look at 2024, but also presidencies beyond. The top political moment of the year could well turn out to be a foreign crisis on October 7th the Hamas terror attack against Israel that has led to a surge in anti-Semitism here at home, an increase in Islamophobia, and turned large numbers of America's young voters, a critical part of the president's base, against his Israel policy. And certainly that's not a good sign for any U.S. president in election year. My top political moment is the politicization of men, women, and children. I'm talking about the hundreds of thousands of migrants who have requested asylum in the United States this past year and have become politicized by politicians who have sent them many times hundreds of miles to other cities in the United States after they have undertaken the most dangerous, difficult journey one can imagine just to get to the United States. That simple and yet important concept of asylum, should it be politicized? I don't think so. My top moment of 2023 is the Supreme Court finally doing something good for a change, something that could have major reverberations across the country as we look ahead to the 2024 election. On June 8th, the high court upheld Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, and that's the part that prohibits state and local officials from adopting laws that discriminate on the basis of race, color, or a minority group. In the 5-4 decision, Allen v. Milligan, the justices ruled against the state of Alabama and struck down a Republican-drawn congressional map that only contained one majority black district. The United States Supreme Court agreed that Alabama's black population was actually large enough that it should have two majority black districts. So in other words, the court gave voters the right to pick their leaders and not the other way around. My top political moment of 2023 was learning who the hell is Harlan Crow? I mean, that is not a name I would have thought I was going to learn a lot about. But in 2023, lo and behold, Harlan Crow is a name that I've become very familiar with. A billionaire Republican donor, Harlan Crow. Harlan Crow. Harlan Crow. Harlan Crow. The reason is, all of the connections between Harlan Crow and a sitting Supreme Court justice by the name of Clarence Thomas. The amount that we have learned about Justice Clarence Thomas and the allegations of corruption and unethical behavior and connections to very powerful, very wealthy people, including Harlan Crow, well, I gotta say that just takes it to a whole new level. And there you have it, our top political moments of 2023. And if I were to make a New Year's prediction, 2024 is going to be even wilder. We'll be bringing you every moment as it all happens, so see you there.